Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadi and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are going to solve your Premiere Pro render and export error problems. Look, we've all been there. You know, you go to try to render your timeline and then, or you're done with your video and you go to hit export and then, boom. Now, I never curse on this channel but render and export errors in Adobe Premiere Pro are the f***ing worst. Now, just a bit of a caveat before we dive in, I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of different little fixes that I've found over the years. Some may work for you, some may not work at all, but I've done at least one of these once at some point in my professional career, and it has fixed my render or export issues. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will find the solution that works for you. And when you do find the solution, I would love to hear which one worked for you. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know which one of these tips has helped you finish your project. Now, before we dive into the details, I want to make sure that you guys are just having, you know, general good housekeeping with your computer, okay? I want you to make sure that Adobe Premiere Pro is up to date and you are running the most recent version. I know that might be contrary to popular belief, but you should probably always be running the most recent version just because it's awesome and new features and better bug fixes and sometimes it... Anyway, make sure Adobe Premiere is up to date inside of Adobe Creative Cloud. You're also going to want to make sure your Windows is up to date or your Mac is up to date with the most recent software version of whatever Linux. Are you running Linux? Who knows? But make Make sure that your computer software is up to date. Make sure that your NVIDIA graphics card drivers or whatever graphics card you have, those drivers are up to date. If you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, you should be using the studio drivers, not the game ready drivers, unless you're like a hardcore gamer. But if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a video editor. Use the studio drivers and make sure that you are doing a clean install of those studio drivers. That's going to give you the best chance for success with no hardware and coding issues. If you're saving over previous versions of your NVIDIA driver software, it can just create a lot of problems. So make sure that you're doing a fresh and clean install every single time. And last but not least, once you've done all this stuff, you've updated everything and your software is up to date and blah, 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 restart your computer. All right. All these people that don't ever restart their computer, what are you even doing? You'd be surprised how many problems just a simple restart can fix. Okay. So you're, everything's up to date. You've restarted your computer. And now we're going to dive into Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm going to show you guys a bunch of different things that could fix a, a variety of issues. We don't know. But again, leave a comment in the comment section below which one of my tips has helped you today. I'm genuinely curious. I'm taking notes. So open up Adobe Premiere Pro because we are getting started right now. All right, guys, I've got Adobe Premiere open and down on my timeline, I've just got some nice B-roll from my baby moon that I went on in Mexico. By the way, I had a baby. Here's a picture of my son, Leo. He's adorable. Sorry that I haven't posted a video in a while. This is my first video back being a father and we're solving the critical issues that you have rendering and exporting. I know, I know thank me later or thank me in the comments. <laughs> Anyways, so down here on my timeline, I've got this B-roll from Mexico. And the first thing that you guys are gonna wanna do is make sure that your sequence settings are actually accurate. You'd be surprised how many problems come from sequence settings being whack. So if you come up to sequence and go to sequence settings, uh, this is kind of what I have mine set up as right now. Uh, editing mode custom is kind of the most important. Some of you will have it on like RE Cinema or like one of these other random things. Make sure that your timeline editing mode is set to custom. Uh, whatever frame rate you're working in, 23976 for me, 1920 by 1080, pixel aspect ratio square, no fields, progressive scan, and all of this stuff can stay at default. So make sure that your sequence settings are set to something that actually makes sense because if they're not, you'll have a whole bunch of issues that could be happening when you try to render your timeline. And on top of making sure that your sequence settings are accurate, come up here to edit, go to preferences and media, and make sure that the checkbox for automatically refresh growing files and whatever this other one underneath it is turned off. All right, 99.9% .9 of people don't need growing file access in Adobe Premiere. I have been told that basically when you have a live stream coming in and it's feeding directly into Premiere when you're doing like live editing, those are growing files because they're like constantly generating metadata or whatever. And that will just bog down your computer and do really weird things, especially when you're trying to render or whatever. So make sure that automatically refresh growing files <gasps> is turned off. Okay, we've done that. Moving on. So I know what you're thinking. Ian, render your timeline. Cool. Sequence, render into out and everything is going perfect. And then all of a sudden, oh no, error compiling movie. All right, it's the most generic, vague error of all time, but there is actually some pretty useful information down here once we get into the nitty gritty. Okay, the two things that I really want you guys to focus on is around time code and also rendering at offset. So one of these two numbers is going to be your problem area. It's either at 15 seconds and four frames or six and a half seconds roughly on my timeline. Now by process of elimination, I can see that I got the error right at around six and a half seconds. So I'm gonna rule out the 15 seconds and four frames and assume that it's six and a half seconds because that's where my actual render stopped, okay? So you're gonna look at those two numbers and then you're gonna make a determination what is actually causing that error. 
So nine times out of 10, it is going to be a plugin related issue, especially when you see up here, if I go back and try to render it again, GPU render error. It's having some sort of trouble with an effect that I have on my clip. So let's go to that clip and let's see, you can see that the first couple frames of this clip are actually black. So something is going wrong. And in my effect controls, we have a warp stabilizer, a Lumetri color, and a flicker free plugin dropped on that clip. And one good way to try to figure out what a render error is, is just simply by deactivating one of, or many of the effects that you have on your clip. So I'm gonna deactivate warp stabilizer, and you can see that it fixed that clip right at the beginning. And now if I go to sequence, render into out, it's actually gonna render through the rest of my timeline. So that's an indication to me that warp stabilizer was the problem. Now, I am not nesting this clip. I could nest it and then drop warp stabilizer on it again. And let's try that nest and drop warp stabilizer on the nested clip and i'm going to change this to five percent and position scale and rotation and now let's see if i'm actually able to render this simply by nesting all right now let's try to re-render my sequence and see if that actually solved the problem and it did so it was the warp stabilizer in collaboration with all the other effects on that clip and now i've been able to successfully render my timeline by disabling warp stabilizer, nesting, and then putting the warp stabilizer back onto the clip, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning and I'm going to re-enable warp stabilizer and I'm going to try to render again and see if that's actually causing the problem. And yes, it is, <laughs> immediately get the error again. So another thing that you guys can try is actually reordering the plugins that you have on the clip. So I'm gonna try simply dragging this flicker free above warp stabilizer, just reordering those effects, go to sequence, render into out, and in theory, this should actually work, right? So sometimes the effect stack will cause render issues. So if you simply just like drag and like swap these around somehow, that will trick Premiere into thinking that it's something different and it will solve some of your render issues. Conversely, you can take an adjustment layer, you can put it above your clip, and I'm just going to get rid of this transform property on there. And I'm going to now copy the flicker free and the Lumetri color, copy, delete those off of the clip, put them on the adjustment layer just like so. And now I'm going to try to render and I'm getting another error, right? So like two of the three things that I tried actually worked. Uh, it looked like reordering the effects uh, in the stack actually was the thing that worked the best. So flicker free above warp stabilizer, and I am able to render my timeline seamlessly. So for plugins on your clip, it's disabling each plugin individually to see where the problem is actually occurring, reordering the effects stack in your little hierarchy in your clips, or copying and pasting those effects onto an adjustment layer and working non-destructively. Those are the three ways that I've found fixing render errors associated with plugins actually works the best. So go ahead, try one of those. If you're having an issue, let me know if it actually fixed it. We are moving on to more render errors. So fun this episode. So I'm gonna go back down to my original problem, which was flicker free at the bottom bottom and warp stabilizer at the top. And another way that you can solve an issue is just simply by nesting the clip. Uh, my shortcut is shift N, but you can right click and go to nest, nest the clip and then try re-rendering. Sometimes when you nest a clip, it will again trick Premiere into thinking that everything is right, but I'm unfortunately still getting the GPU render error. Additionally, if you're gonna try nesting the clip, try scaling it from 100 to 101%. Sometimes again, for whatever reason, scaling it up by 1% tricks Premiere into making it work. It's not working for me, but it might be working for you. So another way to fix a render error is just to nest the clip and see what happens and then nest and scale up. That might also fix your issue. A third way that you can fix your render errors is by changing your video preview format. By default, if you come up here to sequence and sequence settings, it is set to iframe only MPEG for your video previews. What you can do is you can switch this from iframe only MPEG to QuickTime and then change the codec to 422HQ. Click OK. It will ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Because you're going to have to re-render your entire timeline. Totally fine. Hit OK. And now I'm going to render this sequence and it should chunk through that problem area that I had simply by, oh, nope, just kidding, but it might work for you. This has worked for me in the past, but if you guys change your video preview in your timeline, uh, sometimes that will fix any issues that you're having. I am very specifically having an issue with a plugin. You guys might be having some other issue that's not plugin related at all. So make sure that you try all of these things. I'm just giving you the knowledge that I have in my brain after editing in Adobe Premiere for, I don't even know how long. I've, I've lost so many hours of sleep trying to figure this stuff out and here you guys got a cheat sheet. You're welcome, did I mention I had a baby? He's really cute, let's keep going. And the last tip for rendering errors I'm gonna give you is changing Premiere's internals to not look at your hardware or your GPU, but instead use the software. Unfortunately, this is a much lengthier process to render and also export, but it might fix some of the issues that you're having. So check this out, come up here to file and then go to project settings, general, and we are going to change the renderer from Mercury Playback Engine GPU Accelerated to software only. 
and I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm going to come up here to Sequence and I'm going to Render Into Out. And it's gonna take a lot longer to render because it's not using my hardware. But in theory, I'm gonna to try to talk through it and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, it should chunk through that problem area. It already did. It already rendered through that clear that the plugin was causing some sort of GPU accelerated error, but I am able to kind of render through that problem area simply by using software only. And now I should be able to play my timeline fluidly without any issues or render errors. You can see the green bar all the way across the top, and that makes me a happy camper. Boom, a little magic there for you for your rendering errors. I hope that some of those tips help you, but now we're gonna move on to the export errors. And this is certainly one of the most confusing things. You've done your edit, you're super psyched on it, you just wanna export it either to watch it or to like put it out on YouTube and you just keep getting this stupid error over and over again. You hit export and then you get the error. You hit export, you get the error. It will drive the best of us absolutely mental. So here are my tips and tricks to get your export to export for you so that you don't lose sleep and don't get gray hairs and don't go absolutely crazy. Let's dive into it. So I'm going to go to export this video. I'm going to hit control M. And most of you are probably exporting to H.264. You're coming down here. You may be picking a preset, whatever. If you're having an issue exporting, what I would like you to do is change the format to QuickTime and then the preset to Apple ProRes 4444. If you don't have Apple ProRes 4444, you can use Apple ProRes 422 HQ. If you don't have that, uh, I don't really know what to tell you. You can use DNX HD, uh, which might be an option for you here. It is not for me, but Apple ProRes 4444, which is a lossless codec, and it usually will let you export if H.264 is messing up for whatever reason. A little secret sauce here, go to render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality, and also change the depth from eight bits per channel to 16 bits per channel, just to make it look real nice. Tell it where you want it to save. We're gonna save it to my rough edits export, and I'm gonna call this whatever that is. Hit save, and now hit export, and in theory, I should be able to export this timeline if it was giving me an <gasps> issue. God bless it, Adobe Premiere. Again, I'm having a plugin related issue, but this may solve your problem. Now, I'm gonna come back up here and I'm going to go to H.264 and I'm going to pick my whatever YouTube 1080 preset down here, Vimeo, let's go Vimeo 1080 preset. I'm gonna render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. You already know that I'm having issues with this thing, but the secret sauce is changing it from performance hardware encoding to software encoding. So you can actually do the same thing on your export specifically instead of doing it in Premiere itself. Same file name, whatever, I'm gonna click export and Software encoding, not hardware encoding, huzzah. So software encoding worked for me, maybe it didn't work for you. What you can also do is come right down here and click this little Q button, which will open up your project in Adobe Media Encoder. It comes with After Effects, so if you have the suite, you should also have Media Encoder. Does it come with Premiere? Uh, don't quiz me on my Adobe knowledge. It might, I don't know. I know it comes with After Effects, it auto installs, it's a great program. Anyways, it's open now, and what we can do is we can come in here, we can tell it where to save. I'm gonna save it into the same folder, and I'm gonna name it something different. B and B and B and B and B and B, save. Great, custom. Uh, we're gonna make sure that this is set to what we want. Maximum render quality, maximum render depth, uh, software encoding as well, cool. And we can run everything through Adobe Media Encoder. Just hit play. And look at that, it made it through the problem area, this little preview down here. We saw it with our own eyes and using Adobe Media Encoder has solved my export issue. I am excited. Thank you, Nadia and Sans from Learn How to Edit Stuff. I absolutely will smash that like button and leave a comment in the comment section below and subscribe to your channel because that just helped a lot. Last but not least, and I am not even joking, this has worked on numerous occasions for me. I'm going to highlight everything on my timeline, or if I'm being quick, I'm gonna hit Control A to select everything, and I'm going to nest my entire sequence into one uniform line. And then that, my friends, that should give us what we want. Uh, again, I'm gonna name this something not ridiculous. Uh, let's do numbers this time. Hit save, and I'm going to export that, nesting my sequence. Hopefully it'll make it through the problem area. Yes, it did. My goodness. Uh, so nesting your entire sequence sometimes will solve that problem as well. I, I randomly tried it. It was a complete Hail Mary one day and it ended up working and it saved my ass and I saved a bunch of time and I was happy. And now I'm here to make you happy. And look, if none of those things work, if you watch this entire video and you've tried all of them and none of them work, my recommendation would be to export. And then once you get to an export, 
Try to eyeball where it's failing. If it's failing at 50% of your export, it's safe to assume that you can come down here and kind of eyeball, let's go back to not nested. You can eyeball where 50% is on your timeline. And for me, right here is where 50% was. So it's, it's getting there, it's getting there, boom, fails at 50%. I'm gonna go into my timeline and I'm gonna assume that something must be wrong with this clip. And then you can kind of try everything that we've already talked about again and see if you can pinpoint exactly what the issue is. But guys, I really hope that one of these tips. Something in this video has helped you get through your render, get through your export Ooh. errors, or at least at the very least, you learn something new and you're excited and you smash that like button and commented and subscribed because that's all I ask for. And occasionally for you to buy some plugin packs that I like. Who? Seriously, come on. All right, that's it. I've got nothing else for you. That's all the tips and tricks that I have on rendering and export errors. I really do appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you liking and subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you dropping a comment in the comment section below. And I appreciate you trusting me for all of your Adobe Premiere rendering and export error needs. All right, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section below. There's a link tree link in the description where you can support yourself, you can support me, you can follow me on social media. Did I mention I had a son? He's really cute anyways. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is learning how to edit stuff, and I will see you in the next one.